Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to some more Tyrion Cuthbert, Attorney of the Arcane. So I'm having a lot more fun with this than I thought I would. I was like, oh, it's just a straight up Ace Attorney knockoff. Am I going to like it? And the answer is yes. Even if it was an Ace Attorney knockoff, I thought it would be like funny and I'd enjoy it anyway. But like, this is actually a good game, like on its own. It has taken elements from Ace Attorney. Let me just charge my phone. It has taken elements from Ace Attorney, but it's still really fun. It's still got its own story, got its own cases. I'm invested. I need to know what's going to happen next. And the characters are also cute. The art style, everything. Mwah. Mwah. I love visual novels. So I bought this because it is visual novel week at the moment at the time of recording on Steam and I was having a quick scroll through thinking what can I grab. This came up so I was like huh Ace Attorney right? So here we are. I think even the background of the main menu screen is... I thought it was a courtroom actually. I don't think it is. I was gonna say very Ace Attorney but I actually don't think it is. I don't know what it is guess we'll find out maybe later on in the game but I'm very excited to jump in we started we should be able to in this episode start trial day one our first trial after the case happened last episode so we are Tyrion Cuthbert we were traveling with our mentor we met we went to this tavern uh, there was this guy and his daughter yada 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 go watch the first episode if you haven't already and yeah the dad got murdered basically spoilers <laughs> the dad got murdered the daughter's been taken in and under arrest for his murder and now we're gonna get to trial i'm guessing we're gonna try and defend her because we know it wasn't her so let's get into it y'all uh okay can i use my controller again du -du 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 -du. load that save data here we go You follow the Inquisition back to the city where Celeste is being detained. According to Miss Tamora, Celeste was the prime suspect in Flynn Hart's murder. And due to the supposed nature of the crime, her case would be pushed to trial immediately. But many elements of the situation still don't make sense. The Inquisition only investigates crimes committed using magic. So why is Celeste their prime subject? Uh, suspect? Uh, I didn't even think about that. Um, she's not involved, is she? Or is she a mage? Is she secretly a mage? Was the dad secretly a mage? Because the... The... What's he called? The merchant from last episode. When we mentioned um, Celeste and her dad, he said something about, like, that damn uh, mage or something like that. So, is one of them, not sure which one, a mage? Hmm... Could she be a mage? Ah! Oh yeah, this is ridiculous. She has a right to speak to an attorney. Anyway, you find yourself met with another hurdle. A very frustrating one. Yeah, well, we can't let you see her until she's been processed. Her trial is in an hour. How has she not been processed yet? That's insane. I don't know what to tell you, kid. Wish I could help. You don't need to use the eye to know that that's a complete lie. Yeah, we've got like this eye of Horace that lets us see straight through people, basically. I've still got the really sore throat. I'm recording this episode straight off the back of the last one. So I've still got my sore throat. So, you're really planning on defending her? It's a baby. Do you know if she can even afford a lawyer? I, I just can't stand here and do nothing. You saw them, didn't you? There's no way she would murder her father like that. I know that look. I was saving this for a special occasion, but... We don't actually know for sure it wasn't her. She ran out of the tavern. How do we know she didn't, like, come, you know, go before we found her, like, run back, kill him, run back outside? It wasn't her, but, like, how, how do we as an attorney know that? We just, we believe in her. That's, that's all we know. A magical runestone that allows you to take pictures of crime scenes. Get, get rid of my mouse. And write notes telepathically. Every attorney has one. It's almost like a badge for them. <gasps> An attorney badge! Just like a attorney. <laughs> I don't want to be constantly making these, um, these comparisons. I'm not complaining at all. This is a very good game. Attorney's runestone has been added to your notes. This is an attorney's runestone? If you're going to defend her, you're going to need one. I, 
He began to tear up. You've wanted one of those ever since you were a child. Me, working in my dream job right now in the video games industry. I still can't believe it. I, I literally wake up every day like, huh, I actually did it. <laughs> so same, same. I can relate to you, Tyrion. It's basically a badge of honor for attorneys. Don't cry, Cuthbert. Sorry. Anyways, one, keep one thing in mind. If you try to defend her, the Inquisition isn't going to fight you fairly. Our court system only exists to create the illusion of justice. <laughs> they hate people like us, and they'll do everything in their power to sabotage you. Damn it. You knew that they'd try to get in your way, but you didn't expect them to do this blatantly. Ugh, what's with all this noise? You feel that knight from the tavern. That's Commander Orim? Orim White? Orim White? <laughs> I don't even know. Orim White to you, kid. Orim White. See, that's very dang and romper, the, um... The scenes like that, then. The little... It's not a lower third. The little introduction animation scene thingy. <laughs> I know what I want about. I had a feeling tomorrow would be sniffing around this case. But I didn't expect her to send a kid to do her dirty work. Hey! I have an attorney's runestone. Thank you very much. Commander, he says he wants to talk to the mage. And? She's got a right to an attorney, doesn't she? Um, well, she hasn't been processed. Commander White looks confused for a moment. The hell kind of bullshit are you trying to pull? Let him through, you idiot. Oh, I like him. A little bit. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. I'm very confused right now. He's letting us see her, at least. I yes, sir. <laughs> the knight leads you through the halls of the dungeon. Troll! There's a troll in the dungeon! I just thought you all should know. For something built in the capital, it looks extremely old and decrepit. I am sad, angry, and shocked down here. You pick up the negative emotions of the prisoners nearby. Makes sense that it's those three emotions. It's a heavy and almost crushing feeling. I'd be a little bit worried if it was the emotion on the left. You've always had to avoid crowded places because of how sensitive you are to people's thoughts. You've never felt this much concentrated despair before. <laughs> despair, very dang and romper. <laughs> Oh, it's you! She's happy to see me! She's in prison and she's still like, oh my god, hi! Celeste is lying down on the cold floor of one of the dungeon cells. But she immediately gets up as soon as she sees you. What are you doing here? Miss Tamora told me about what happened to your father. Oh, another drink, another drink. Stay hydrated, y'all. Excuse me. <gasps> Miss Tamora told me about what happened to your father. I'm so sorry. I just don't understand. I don't understand any of this. Why would someone do this? And why are they blaming me for it? I'm not sure about the details, but it's clear that there were elements of magic involved in what happened. Since they arrested you based on that evidence, I can only conclude one thing. Celeste, you're a mage, aren't you? <gasps> There's no sense in hiding it anymore. Yes. I am. I need to stop skipping the emotions. I'm sorry. Do you have noble blood? Of course not. Why would you say that? Sorry, but the ability to use magic is hereditary. Most mages tend to have some kind of noble blood. I honestly don't like thinking about that. I'm the daughter of Jolene and Flynnhart McCoy. That's all I need to know about myself. Probably be best not to push the matter further. Okay. So maybe her mum was, or an aunt, or something. Maybe she doesn't know as much about her mum as she thought. I'm trying to make my hair look funky. Oh. oh, it would probably be best not to push the matter further. Anyways, you were probably arrested because you're a mage. What? A crime was committed using magic, and you're the only mage around at the time. Is that seriously the only reason? I only know how to cast one spell. The Arcane Inquisition doesn't care about the truth. They only care about closing their cases. Celeste, your case is being pushed to trial. You're going to be brought before a judge within the hour. What? No one told me anything. Damn it. They weren't even planning on telling her? This is brutal. I don't like it here. That is absolutely brutal. If you'll have me, I'd like to be your defense counsel for the trial. 
Right, I forgot that you were an attorney. Would you really do that for me? After everything I've seen them do, I can't just stand by and do nothing. But they're a part of the kingdom. Do we even have a chance? It's hopeless. Celeste, man, king, or god, I won't let them do anything to you. What? Oh my god! Oh, so cute! Oh, it's too early to be shipping things. Sorry, it's just something I have a habit of saying. No, don't apologize. Oh, she's so happy to see me. I really appreciate you doing this. It's clear this entire situation is bittersweet for her. And because of the Inquisition's delays, you haven't had any time to investigate the crime scene. You were confident before, but you began to doubt whether or not you can really do this. I, I did it again, I'm so sorry. No, you have to do this. This is the exact reason why you became a lawyer. Everything is happening so fast. It feels unreal. No matter what happens, you'll acquit Celeste. We got to. We gotta save this poor woman. Oh my god! <gasps> the pixel art scenes that happen before the trial. Like there's a little pixel art bit and then we get back into the HD-ness like this. They do that in Ace Attorney as well. Sorry, I have a really bad way of describing things, but I know what I'm in. A courtroom. I'm in a real courtroom. Actually, entering the courtroom has taken a lot of wind out of your sails. You've never been an attorney, been here as an attorney before. You've only ever acted as an assistant. Oh, she's so beautiful. I love that she's got like pink mascara. Like what? That's so cool. The woman at the prosecutor's bench is staring at you. That's fine. That is fine. Let her stare all she wants. I thought she was wearing like a spider suit underneath that cloak. Mr. Mora mentioned her before you went to see Celeste. What was her name again? You think it was Arya Steelwind? Oh yeah. Screenshot. You could feel the coldness of her glare burrowing into you. Why is she staring you down? Is she trying to intimidate you? Because it's working. <laughs> oh, here we go. And he's going like that. I think the judge does that in these attorney games as well, like looking up. Court is now in session for the trial of Celeste McCoy. The prosecution's ready, Your Honor. Oh, uh... The defense is uh, also ready, Your Honor. He doesn't necessarily sound very ready. Regardless, let's begin the proceedings. Prosecutor Steelwind, please list the charges. The defendant is Celeste McCoy, a mercenary for hire and a registered mage. This sucks. This sucks that we were kept, like, this information was kept from everybody. Yes, she's a mage. Doesn't mean she didn't. Uh -huh. She was the only one around, but doesn't mean she did it. No, -uh. <laughs> I totally don't see why you arrested this woman. No. -uh. Wait, did she just say mercenary? Yeah, I had to take up a job after my family's tavern was shut down. Oh, right. That's not exactly the first occupation you choose. And it doesn't really help our case. She's a mage and a mercenary. She like just ticks all the boxes. She's charged with second-degree murder and negligent misuse of the arcane arts. I see. So there was magic involved. Yes. The crime occurred within the McCoy Tavern, a local inn that shut down years ago. The locals reported hearing a loud commotion coming from within the building. Hours later, a carriage driver that was nearby checked the disturbance. It was then that he found the victim, the defendant's sword still impaling his dead body. The Inquisition has provided an autopsy report and a record of the sword. Uh, Flynn! <laughs> Died after being stabbed from behind with a magical blade. Fatal wound shows heavy traces of transmutation magic. Uh, who was it that's good with transmutation magic? I think the guy who did it. I think it said his skill set is transmutation magic. So I was thinking... Um, Celeste, but Celeste, obviously we didn't know she was a mage or could even do magic until two minutes ago. So, it's that guy, if we can prove that. Celeste's sword, the alleged murder weapon. What was the defendant's relationship with the victim? I see they share the same last name. The defendant is the victim's daughter, but not by blood. She was adopted into the family when she was an infant, makes sense. Her birth parents are currently unknown. 
I see. What an unfortunate turn of events. To begin, the prosecution would like to call Commander Orm White to the stand. I love her. Witness, please state your name and occupation for the court. I'm never going to be tired of looking at her. I won't. I hate that she's only 18. I've just remembered that. Bat that away. <laughs> it's just cool that she has pink eyelashes, okay? I like pink eyes. Pink is my favorite color. <laughs> I want to be her. Name's Orem White. I'm a commander of the Arcane Inquisition. Orem. Could you please testify about the details of the Inquisition's investigation? Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. We got a call. Oh, snazzy music. We got a call late at night. Someone discovered a dead body inside the McCoy Tavern. When we arrived on the scene, we found Flinhart McCoy dead on the floor. The defendant's sword was still inside of him. No, no. Did they stage that? Wasn't her sword with her? I don't know. Or was it back at the tavern and that butler guy like cleaned it up or something? We have several witnesses who heard the victim and defendant in a loud argument before the body was discovered. A body has been discovered. The argument must have turned ugly because the defendant killed the victim using her magic sword. Isn't that really incriminating? One of her possessions is the murder weapon. Mr. Cuthbert, you may begin your cross-examination. Uh, you open your mouth to respond, but nothing comes out. You can't think of anything to say. Everything is blank. <laughs> this is crazy. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, have we even got a chance with this? Mr. Cuthbert? Hey, what are you doing? I swear that's the same pose that Maya always makes, like in Ace Attorney as well. Like, Maya always looks at you like that. This is the part where you say something, right? I I'm sorry, I, I don't... Your anxiety is just getting worse and your breaths are becoming more and more desperate. Are you, um, hyperventilating? <sighs> what a disappointment. I was hoping to fight against the infamous Ruby Tamora today. But it's clear you can't even hold a candle to her. <gasps> Not a whip, but she has a staff. Oh my god, your honour, it's clear that the defence has nothing to say against the prosecution's overwhelming evidence. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll think of something. We'll do an, um, objection. Yeah, this case is pretty open and shut. No, wait. This, this isn't what's supposed to happen. I'm sorry, Tyrion. I, I couldn't acquit Frey. She was found guilty. What? But that means, are they going to execute her? No, not again. Are you serious? Are you gonna let that happen again? What was that? I wonder who Frey was. So she's failed somebody. Our mentor failed somebody. And someone maybe we knew. I don't know. Did they get executed? Oh my god. This game is dark. Tyrion. Celeste grabs your shoulders and shakes you out of your panic. You need to calm down. Her gaze is calm and focused, despite the gravity of the situation. But she looks stern, not angry. God, my throat. I'm sorry, I didn't mean for this to... Stop! Just listen to me. You know what to do, right? Ugh. Just do it the same way you play chess. What? I don't know. You were just so calm and focused when we were playing before. No matter how close I got to beating you, you always knew how to stay calm and win. So just channel that feeling and look at the pieces? That doesn't make any sense. And of course, we have the record, they're the pieces. And yet, you take a moment to focus and let everything else disappear from the world. Every statement that he made, every word that came out of his mouth, each of those is a possible weakness that you can attack. Every bleak moment can be turned around. You just need to consider every angle. My apologies for the delay, Your Honour. The defence is ready to begin cross-examining the witness. Very well. <laughs> there we go. Thank God that worked. <laughs> Carefully examined. And she sat there thinking, Jesus Christ, my life is on the line. Look at you. Carefully examine every statement he made and find something that contradicts the evidence in your notes. Once you do that, present the contradicting evidence and prove that his testimony is false. What does that sound like? <laughs> no, oh my god. 
so many similar things. You are cross-examining a witness. Carefully examine each statement they made and find a statement that contradicts a clue, a spell, or a profile in your notes. Once you identify the full statement, click the present but present button and present the contra 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 contradicting evidence to move forward. We got a late call. I got a call late at night. Someone discovered a body in Southern Court Tavern. Um, how do I do this bit on? On a controller, literally. Ah, ah! Oh, that tells me how to do. That tells me how to do keyboard controls. I have literally pressed every single button. Ah, oh, goddamn! I think I'm gonna have to do this bit with the with the mouse. When we arrived on the scene, we found Flynn Hart McCoy dead on the floor. The defendant's sword was still inside of him. Um, what do we even have to present? Oh, we can press as well for more information. So, the autopsy. Died after being stabbed. Shows heavy traces of transmutation. An all lately designed sword, but has no magical properties. We won't need this. This is like the attorney badge. Spells, profiles. Oh, we have profiles again as well. The defendant's sword was still inside of him. Died after being stabbed from behind with a magical blade. Okay, so it doesn't say anything about the weapon being in, in his back. I was thinking maybe that was it. Oh, give me a second. I've got to try and get comfy with the mouse because I don't think this is quite like controller friendly yet. Um, we have several witnesses who heard the victim and defendant in a loud argument before the body was discovered. Uh, so I'm guessing that merchant was one, but he's not one of the profiles. I love her. Um, <laughs> the argument must have turned ugly because the defendant killed the victim using her magic sword. But it's not magic. Can I, like, save? This is what I always do, like, in Ace Attorney. Before I answer anything, I save in case I fuck it up. Okay. Oh, I did not just say that. In case I fudge it up. I'm sorry. I'm trying to make an effort to stop swearing. No, not press! That's conjecture. Weren't there plenty of people around who could have committed the crime? That tavern's been closed for years. The defendant, the victim, and Ruby Tamora were the only ones there before the body was discovered. Plus, the murder weapon definitely belonged to her. Well, it's a given that Miss Tamora didn't do this, and it'll be hard to prove that someone else was at the crime scene. But you can't help but feel there's something off about what he just said. Ah. Okay present the weapon. Objection. Did I do it? Normally it does that when you got it right. Commander White, you testified that the victim was killed using the defendant's magical sword. Am I correct? Yeah, it's pretty obvious when you look at the crime scene. But no, 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 the snazzy music has now, <laughs> has now come into play. I think I'd actually have to disagree with you on that. The defendant's sword couldn't have possibly been the murder weapon. What are you talking about, kid? The sword was inside his body. Of course that's what killed him. That may be the case, but take a look at the autopsy report. It states that the fatal wound had heavy traces of magic. So how would a non-magical sword leave traces of magic on the body? What? To leave a trace like that, the wound would have... I don't know what happened to my voice there, I'm so sorry. To leave a trace like that, the wound would have had to have been created with something magical. My client's sword may look fancy and expensive, but it's entirely mundane. That doesn't make a lick of sense. If the sword didn't kill him, then why is it in the body? Yes, I find that quite strange as well. Well, there's only one reasonable explanation, Your Honor. The wound was created magically, and someone shoved the sword into the wound afterwards. The hell are you talking about? The defendant's a damn mage. She could have easily killed the victim using magic. That may be, Commander. Oh god, what's gonna happen? <sighs> but why would she kill the victim using magic and then stab him with her sword? She would just be incriminating herself. See, look at him, he's doing so well. Oh, I got it, I got a screenshot, I got a screenshot. I'm sorry, I need to move my mouse. Uh, no, if anything, this series of events proves one thing. Someone used magic to kill the victim. And then they pushed my client's sword into the wound to frame her. Don't get ahead of yourself. What? 
Your Honour, the defence is trying to spin the facts in his favour. <sighs> this woman. <laughs> he claims that a third party committed the crime and used a sword to frame the defendant. But wouldn't the simpler explanation be this? Magic was being channeled through the sword at the time of death. That is what left the magical trace on the body. Commander, please tell the defence how the murder was committed using magic. What? Oh, alright, alright. I think I see where you're going with this. So they've got to do it again. We're going to carry on a little bit more. We haven't got them yet. It's true the sword itself isn't magical, but magic can still be channeled through it. That defendant over there, her spell compendium has a spell called Mage Blade. She must have used it, used it on her sword before stabbing the victim. That spell is the reason why there were traces of transmutation magic on the wounds. No, they got us here. So her spell companion. That's the only spell that she knows as well. Didn't she say she only knows one spell? Luckily, Celeste's companion only, tains, only contains one spell. That means she can only cast one. Celeste, do you have your spell companion with you? No, I, I left it at the tavern after... Well, you know. If you can't look at the description for Mage Blade, you'll have to approach this another way. The commander's testimony was a lot vaguer this time. I feel like I'm going to be bad at like picking up all the little things with this. If you compress his statements, you might be able to find new information you can use against him. Okay. During cross-examination, during cross-examinations, you can press statements to acquire more information. Okay. Um. Oh. Oh, I forgot I have to do this bit with my mouse. <laughs> Magic can be channeled through it. Uh, maybe he can tell me what Mage Blade is? Mage Blade? It's a transmutation spell that sharpens my sword. I usually use it when I need to cut through an enemy's plate armor. You didn't realize that she led such a, a lethal lifestyle? Yeah, she doesn't, she doesn't seem the type to be a mercenary, does she? I mean, look at her. But anyways, wouldn't it be excessive for the defendant to use a spell like that on the victim? She reminds me of like your uh, from a spy family. He wasn't wearing any kind of armor at the time of death. The victim and the defendant were in an intense argument. Perhaps she used the spell in a fit of rage. It was a crime of passion after all. Ugh, that theory's a little far-fetched. But you'll need hard evidence if you want to disprove it. Hmm. So that didn't really do much. So it sharpens her blade. Died after being stabbed from behind with a magical blade. I don't know. Uh, this is where I'm going to suck at this game. That spell is the reason. So he added that last time. So let's press that. If she used a spell like that, wouldn't that have created traces of magic on the ground? How so? Well, let's say we follow the prosecution's theory. That would mean that the victim fell to the ground with the sword still inside him. Uh-huh. At this point, Mage Blade would still be active, right? It would definitely leave a magical trace on the ground after making physical contact with it. We're already way ahead of you. We had our people scan the crime scene, and we found traces of transmutation magic right under the body, just like you said. Oh, okay, well, we kind of landed ourselves in that one there, didn't we? If you still don't believe me, I have a picture of the crime scene right here. And oh, why was this picture not brought to my attention? There was no need. This entire case is open and shut. Mm-hmm. This is how you get people that shouldn't end up in prison ended up in prison. You've seen pictures of the dead before, but it feels different now that the body is of someone you knew. Oh, baby. Looks like there are traces of magic on the ground. But this shape is a little weird, isn't it? What, the little hexagons? Hexagon? <laughs> Hexagons? <laughs> what was that just now? Oh, you can see it right in this photo. She killed him with a stab from the front. No, she didn't. She killed him. Um, She didn't kill him. It says here, died after being stabbed from behind. Boom. Objection. Boom. Objection. I'm sorry, Commander White. But it seems you've presented another glaring contradiction. Oh, yeah. What's that? You said my client stabbed the victim from the front. Am I correct? Yeah, you see it plain in the picture. So where's your contradiction? 
That's the thing, Commander. Your picture clearly shows that the victim was stabbed from the front. But the autopsy report says he died from a stab from behind. What? Hey! Or, um, he was supposed to release everything that you had. Why wasn't this photo given to me? She kind of looks like the girl I saw in my dreams, or at least like she has the same color eyes. There was no need. There's no way it could have been anyone other than that damn mage. Murmurs ring out across the gallery. It didn't matter how corrupt the justice system was. They wouldn't be able to cover up such blatant incompetence. You have them right where you want them. Probably not for long, though. What's the bet? They're going to, like, throw something else in my face now. Order! Order in the court. Mr. Cuthbert, what is the meaning of this? I'll tell you what the meaning behind this is, Your Honor. As the autopsy report states, the victim died from a stab wound originating from his back. But this photo clearly shows that the sword entered his front. This could only mean one thing. The sword was inserted into the wound after the fatal wound had already been created. That's crazy. Do you honestly expect us to believe that? Then please enlighten me, Commander White. How else would the sword be facing the opposite way? I love him. He's doing so well. Do you think my client stabbed the victim with the hilt of her sword? I didn't think so. What really happened is clear. The real murderer stuck the sword through the victim's wound to implicate my client. But they made a careless mistake and stuck the sword through the opposite side. Here we go. Hmm. It appears that I underestimated you, Mr. Cuthbert. No, she's going to undo everything I just said. No, 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 no. <sighs> but you've still got ahead of yourself. How so? Really, Miss Stillwin? I believe that Mr. Cuthbert has adequately cast doubt on your case. Oh, did he now? Then let me ask you one question, Mr. Cuthbert. If your client didn't kill Lynn Hart McCoy, then who did? How should I know? They're going to bring my mentor in. Please don't say they're going to bring my mentor in. Please. If I'm not mistaken, it's the commander's job to figure that out. Oh, I'm well aware of the commander's incompetence. But one fact still stands. There was magic detected on the wound and the sword. I'm getting far too into this, I've noticed. <laughs> As the episodes have gone on. Would you like for me to tell you how many mages live in that small town? I don't like where she's going with this. Just one. There's only one registered mage in that entire town. Yeah, but it's a tavern. Like, people travel through from different towns. Like, it doesn't have to be somebody from that town. And that mage is your client. Screenshot. What? No, 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 no. Look at it. Look at all of them. No, 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 no. Can you believe? Uh, oh, I missed that. She was last known person with him and she was the only mage there. In addition to that, I have several witnesses who heard them arguing. <gasps> Sorry, I keep having the mouse on the screen. How she murdered the victim is simply an unanswered question. God, I'm loving this game. I'm so into this now. Uh, it was on sale, but not by much. And I still decided to jump on it. Not regretting that. Hmm, I see. That certainly does change matters. No wonder I've got no voice. Like, my, my throat's sore. <laughs> Ugh, my god, so much speaking. I can't say that the prosecution's evidence is irrefutable, but there is still evidence that casts guilt upon the defendant. Damn it, you almost had them. There are far too many answered questions for me to pass a verdict. We will give law enforcement time to clear these unknowns. I suggest that they, they can... The chebe? I suggest that they conduct their investigation more thoroughly this time. <laughs> we will resume the trial tomorrow morning. Court is adjourned. Ah, now we get an investigation day two. Can't put her in prison just yet. Hello, Cuthbert. As you walk out of the room with Celeste, you're greeted by Miss Tamora. Miss Tamora, you're here? You recall how you froze up during the first cross-examination? Did she see that? Did she get to see us? Did she get to see how grown up we were? You felt a little ashamed that your mentor saw all of that. We were amazing. What are you on about? At the end of the day, you were able to pull it together. You saw that. <laughs> and once you did, you performed adequately. On that note, I wanted to give you this. Celeste's spell compendium. It contains the formula for Mage Blade. 
For the duration of the spell, the edges of this object, usually a blade, become unnaturally sharp, making it more effective at slashing through tough material. While under the effects of the spell, the object emits a yellow radiant glow. Okay, the target object must be no longer than a five foot cube. Ah. Trying to see where all of this could, could play into it. Did, was there a yellow glow in the picture? Duration, one minute. Hmm. Is a transmutation spell though, so it doesn't make us look good. My spell compendium. I swiped it from the dining area before the Inquisition arrived. Oh, give me a second. Da -da 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 -da. Sorry, well, I think I mentioned last episode about I'm waiting on a text for a family member in A and E. Uh, I just had a message, so I'm, I'm just checking. E everything's okay. Uh, I swiped it from the dining area before the Inquisition arrived. I thought it'd be best for you to have it. So this is your spell compendium, and it only has one spell: Mage Blade. This means that the prosecution has to prove that Celeste used that specific spell. It will restrict how they approach this case, which gives you an edge over them. But that prosecutor is really something else. You mean Prosecutor Steelwind? You can still remember her ripping glare. It gives you chills just thinking about it. I want to see her angry, because she reminds me of the girl from our dream. You wouldn't even know it, but this was also her first trial. No way! Really? I'd thought that her inexperience would make for a good first opponent. But that girl... She's a natural in the courtroom. It makes me wonder why a steel wind would choose to become an attorney in the first place. What do you mean? Steel winds are a powerful noble house. Ah, it's like, why do I feel like her parents are as, like steel winds? You know, like um, Celeste's actual parents. I don't think that will be the case. They're just nobles. There's a lot of nobles. But like, oh, how awkward would that be if she was like related? to um, Arya. <laughs> of the noble families, they are uh, they are one of the few who answer directly to the king. Most members of their house take high ranking positions in the kingdom's military. So it's a bit strange that she chose to become a prosecutor despite that. Steel wind. I feel like I've heard it somewhere before. Well, we haven't because this is our first game. They need to do sequels now. I'm getting sad that this is the only game. Like Ace Attorney, there's three games, and then there's the um, Ace Attorney Chronicles. So you got a trilogy, and then Ace Attorney Chronicles 1 and 2. So you got five games overall, and then this one, there's only the one. Damn. It's best you focus on the trial. You have about a day until court resumes. Right, now that I have time, I'd like to ask you some questions, Celeste. Namely about that argument you had with your father. Oh. You see the bailiff staring daggers at Celeste. Is that meant to say st starring? I think it is meant to say staring. It looks like they're waiting to take her back to her cell. Whatever questions you have, we'll have to wait. Uh, I should probably go. Oh my god. Poor baby. Celeste walks away while avoiding eye contact with you. Bringing up her argument with Flynnhart may have struck a nerve. Yeah, but it's necessary. It's necessary for the case. I'm so... I feel so bad that I'm having to put her through all this. I'll also use this opportunity to investigate the crime scene. I wouldn't be surprised if the Inquisition missed something. You utterly embarrassed them today. Hell yeah. Don't expect them to make the same mistake twice. Right. There are still a lot of things we don't know. As much as I hate to admit it, your skills of deduction far surpass mine while I have my eye of horse. If anyone can figure out what really happened that night, it's you. Hey, would you like to save your progress? Yes, I would, please. I would like to save and go no, to the main menu. Because I'm going to end that episode there. I think that was slightly shorter than the last one, but... I have work in the morning and I need to go to sleep. So, I shouldn't have even recorded the second episode, but I really wanted to play more of it. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what your favorite part of the episode was and how you think it's gonna come about that we end up getting this guy in. Is he gonna be there, like the murderer? Is he gonna appear as a witness or something? Cause how, how would we ever find out it was him? There's probably no record of him being there. 
I don't know. I don't know how they're actually going to tie him into it. So I'm really intrigued. It's actually so good. I just... I forgot with visual novels. Obviously, it's a lot of talking and my throat has gone crazy. But I hope you all enjoyed the episode. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And stay hydrated. Take care of yourselves. Take your meds and all that funky jazz. And I will see you all very soon. So leave me a comment. Let me know if you would like to see the series continued. And I will see you in the next one. I'm so excited. Bye, guys.